Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of I Fix Old Stuff. Today we're going to be looking at a Gottlieb high hand machine from the early 70s. It's got a flipper bat problem, and we're going to also take a look at how an actual pinball flipper works. High Hand was released by Gottlieb in 1973. It's actually one of my favorite pinball machines of all time. Unfortunately, it recently developed a problem, as you can see here, is one of the flipper bats is actually cracked, which is no good. So in this video, we're going to fix it, and I'm going to explain how pinball flippers work. My buddy Dan was kind enough to drop me off an entire bag of vintage pinball flipper bats. So hopefully, we'll be able to find one in here, clean it up, and install it. Thanks a lot, Dan. Okay, so I've got the machine open here, and as you can see, these are our two uh, flipper solenoids here. So I thought, before we actually replace the flipper bat, let's explain how flippers actually work. These are called a solenoid, or a coil, and they have a, you know, a piece of metal bar here that's connected to, a, connected to the bat here. And what a coil does is if you put a current through it, of course, this pulls down, which moves the flipper. And then, of course, on the side of the pinball machine, you've got a, a button that fires that. So if we fire up a game, and actually get it onto ball one, you'll see the flippers are working. Okay, so let's talk about how this actually works. If we notice here, when I press the flipper button, the coil is energized and moves down. If you'll notice though, on a coil like here, if we can see it, these coils here that run the, uh, the kickers on the sides or saucers or pop bumpers or anything like that, they only have two wires. However, a flipper coil has three wires. So why is that? What happens is there's actually two coils inside the one bobbin. And what happens is there's a low resistance part of the coil and then it's tapped and then we have a high resistance part of the coil. So when we press the button, the low resistance coil takes and moves the plunger. However, we have this switch here, which is called an end of stroke switch. And if you notice, it is actually connected across one part of the coil. It's actually connected across the high resistance part of the coil. What happens is, this switch is normally closed and it is actually shorting out or bypassing the high resistance part of the coil. So when we press the button normally, the low resistance part of the coil works. When we reach the end of the stroke of the solenoid, the normally closed switch opens up. Now, what that does is puts the high resistance part of this coil in series with the low resistance. Now, why do we need that? If we didn't do that, when we held the flipper in to maybe catch the ball or do whatever we're doing during the game, if we didn't have that high resistance part of the coil, the coil would actually burn up and overheat. Okay, So in the normal, work, normal shot, low resistance part of the coil, holding the button in, end of stroke switch opens up, and now we've added the high resistance coil in, which provides just enough strength to hold the flipper open or up. Okay, so to replace this bat, first of all, we have to take it apart. And how this works is we've got the shut the machine off, of course. Okay, we've got two screws here that remove this entire section from the bat. It's also spring loaded as well, so we've got to be a little careful here. Yeah, I don't want to don't want to remove those springs at all. My uh, friend Dan and I just balanced this both of these sides, so I don't want to mess with that. Alrighty, just carefully loosen that off. Just 
let that stay there. there. This specific flipper has a spring uh, that provides the back tension uh, for the for the solenoid, I don't want to. I don't want to move that spring, so I'm hoping that'll just stay there. So there's our flipper bat there, as you can see. See on there, nice big crack down it. And what happens is now, because that's on the front, you're actually going to lose quite a bit of kinetic energy, which is what flippers are all about. You know, it's kinetic energy transferring the energy from the the flipper uh, solenoid to the bat and to the ball. All right, so let's see if we can uh, find one of these in our stash and, uh, and replace it. All right, looks like we found one here. Same size of shaft, so that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna just clean this up with a bit of uh, spray and maybe some maybe a uh, magic eraser. I don't wanna clean it up too much. I do like to have my machines with a bit of patina on them. I don't like them to be super, super uh, restored. So, all right, I'm gonna clean that up and switch over the rubber and then we're gonna reinstall it. Now, let's see if we can get this flipper bat back in without disturbing this spring. I really don't want to wind that spring or disturb it in any way. So let's see what we can do here. I'm sure if I'm careful enough, we'll be all right. Good, okay, that's on. Now we just have to balance it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tighten that up a bit. And then what I'm doing there, let me just show you. Now I'm gonna have to clean the other one. I'll give that other one a clean. Okay, so now we've just gotta balance them out so that they're even. That looks pretty good there. What do you think? Oh, it looks pretty even. Okay, let's see if we can tighten this up now. Okay, and as you can see there, we've got free movement, so I've got it sitting in the right spot, which is good. There, okay. One thing you always wanna to check too is that this part right here, which is your connection between the solenoid and the, the flipper itself, you don't want any play in there. They, they wear out over time. This one's not too bad. Right, again, the kinetic energy, right? We don't want to have a gap here or here where we're losing energy. Okay, so and that's nice and snug. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly check the, the other one here. Good. Now we're going to check the end of stroke switch. Um, the end of stroke switch has to be able to open up at exactly the right time. If the end of stroke switch is opening up too early, you're not going to get enough throw on the flipper uh, to make the game really fun to play. So let me just double check. Yeah, and it's just opening up just as it's getting to the end of the travel. The switch is opening up, so that's what we need. Good, good. So that's a real point of failure there that you always want to keep an eye on. Same thing with your actual flipper switches. Uh, you know, if you've, if you've got corrosion 
um, on your actual switches that activate the flipper, you're going to lose energy and you're not going to have a, you know, the same game experience. All right, let's close it up and see, uh, we'll give it a test run here and see what happens. Well, as you can see here, that repair worked like a charm and high hand is up and running again. I'd invite you this time to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.